You must have heard people saying you shouldn't leave your phone plugged in overnight or it will ruin the battery. Well, it's a myth and there are a number of such myths out there that a lot of people think are true when there's absolutely no truth to them. Hey guys, I'm Akshay from vbomb.com and in this video we'll discuss some common tech myths and why they're not true at all. So without any further ado, let's get started. A lot of people keep away from jailbreaking their iPhones because they think that jailbreaking is illegal. This however is not actually true. Jailbreaking is perfectly legal. However, if you use jailbreaking to download copyrighted content, then that is illegal. Jailbreaking was made legal back in 2012 with an exemption made to the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, but Apple still doesn't want you to jailbreak their devices, which is why jailbreaking effectively voids your warranty. However, you can just unjailbreak your device and no one would ever know. Rooting is pretty much the same way. It is perfectly legal to root your Android device. Just make sure you do it properly and don't end up breaking your device. When it comes to battery myths, most myths are just leftover true facts from old days that do not apply to modern devices. A common myth about battery life is that if you leave your device charging overnight, it will harm the battery. This is not actually true because modern devices are smart enough to not let this happen. For example, if you leave a smartphone charging overnight, as soon as the battery reaches its maximum capacity, the smartphone just stops charging the battery and starts using the connected adapter as its main power supply. No extra charge passes to the battery and your phone is completely safe if you charge it overnight. Another common myth about batteries is that you have to let them discharge completely every few days. This is also not true for lithium ion batteries. When it comes to buying a smartphone, most people judge the camera by the megapixel value. And while it's not exactly incorrect that more megapixels is a better thing, the problem is that megapixels are not the only thing at play in a camera. The quality of lenses and the sensor matters a lot. In fact, a higher number of megapixels requires more accurate lenses and better sensors for a good quality image. And if these things are not present, the image quality will actually be worse than a similar lens and sensor camera with less megapixels. For example, the Moto G4 Plus has a 16 megapixel camera, while the Galaxy S8 has a 12 megapixel camera. And the S8 just wipes the floor with the Moto G4 Plus. More megapixels will only be helpful if you need to blow up the image for printing or you need to crop it. However, when it comes to performance of the camera, there are things like the aperture and the size of the pixels themselves that matter a lot more. For example, a camera with an f1.7 aperture will capture a lot more light than a camera with an f2.0 aperture which will result in a lot less noise in low light pictures. This is a very common misconception that a lot of people have. The number of bars that are displayed on your smartphone is not an indicator of the quality of service. It's an indicator of the signal strength from the cellular tower it is connected to. However, if the cellular tower has a lot of devices to service, you will experience call drops and network issues regardless of the number of bars that are being shown on your smartphone. Similarly, if a cellular tower has a lot less devices to service, you will get a better call quality even if the number of bars is low. Obviously, if there are no bars at all on your smartphone, then it doesn't really matter because you don't really have a connection. Torrents, we've all used them and I'm sure you've all seen the messages on various websites that say that the URL has been blocked by orders of authorities. But does that mean that torrents are illegal? Actually no. Torrents are simply a method of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing which is exactly what that Wi-Fi direct feature on your Android smartphone is. Or AirDrop for that matter. Heck, Ubuntu even offers official ISOs via torrents. So as long as you're not downloading copyrighted content from torrents, you're not actually breaking any laws. Copyrighted content includes TV shows, movies, songs, and cracked software and games. Downloading things like that via torrents is absolutely without a doubt illegal. Bottom line is, as long as you're downloading content that you have the right to download, 
you're not actually breaking any laws. Bitcoin, the decentralized digital currency, confuses a lot of people and there are a lot of discussions going on about its legality. We cannot really say anything about the overall legality of Bitcoin because every country takes a different approach to it. However, in most countries, Bitcoin is legal. Even in India, where the government is still taking into consideration the various factors regarding Bitcoin, the status of Bitcoin is not illegal. However, authorities do suggest people to use Bitcoin at their own risk because the currency is not currently regulated. In some countries like US, Canada and most of Europe, Bitcoin is perfectly legal. Whereas in countries like India, China and Russia, Bitcoin is neither legal nor illegal. Remember when you created your Facebook account? The homepage said things like it's free and always will be. Well, that's not true at all. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but nothing is free. Websites like Facebook and services like Gmail and YouTube are offered as free services, but it's not strictly true. These websites and services display ads, and I'm sure you've seen them, and earn revenue through that. And they display these ads using your personal data. So they may not be charging your credit card, but they're surely charging you in terms of your personal life. When I say personal life, I mean highly specific details. This is some of the data that Facebook uses to target ads for me. Look at the things it knows. Things like the phone I use, the things I like, pages I interact with the most, and just so much more, it's rather scary to see. What's more scary is that this is the data that Facebook publicly tells you they have. They probably have a lot more. And all that is being used by advertisers while we think we are getting access to the website for free. You can check the data Facebook has on you by going to the link that is being displayed on your screen now. The link is also available in the description down below. Even Gmail is known to scan and index emails that we send and receive and using that data to sell personalized ads to us. The things that Google knows about us are actually quite terrifying. In fact, if you use Google Maps, I am sure you do, Google basically knows where you are at all times. Just think about that for a moment. We've all gotten into the habit of pressing F5 to refresh windows with the subconscious hope that will make our PCs run faster. This is not true at all. Refreshing on a computer is nothing but making windows redraw the desktop and index changes again. This is useful if you've made a change to a file and it is not being reflected in the explorer. Refreshing can make these changes visible on the screen on the off chance that they were not visible automatically. Modern Windows is smart enough to not really need the refresh functionality, but it's useful for network drives that do not announce changes to the files to the OS. Bottom line is, refreshing your Windows PC will never make it faster. In fact, it adds more work for the computer to do and more elements to redraw. Well, those were some common tech myths and why there's no reason to believe in them. So what are some of the common tech myths that you've heard? Do let us know in the comment section below. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That was all from my side. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.